Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Michelle and I love beauty. I love talking about indie beauty, skincare, makeup, brushes, life in general. As a 50 something year old woman, I just wanna to bring to you the best content that I can for all of us. Today I am trying out the Shiseido Revital Essence Skin Glow Foundation Broad Spectrum SPF 30. And then it does say sunscreen. Bio Booster Technology Fermented Kefir and Niacinamide. When I did a little research, I was um, looking to find out why we're supposed to get 24 hour hydration with something like this and how it does support the barrier. And what I found in doing my research is that the kefir is sort of like a milk derivative that's like in that yogurt family. We know those are really good probiotics. And then the niacinamide we know is something that is just really helpful in skincare for taking care of things and brightening. I am going to go in here. It says that the niacinamide smooths and brightens skin and the kefir plus is a probiotic. And they say this is free of parabens, formaldehydes, phthalates, mineral oil, all of that stuff that we don't want to have in our foundation. It's a serum-like foundation with which weightlessly glides on the skin for a glowing makeup that lasts up to 12 hours. And it quickly evens skin, blurs pores, hydrates for up to 24 hours, and again, powered by the fermented kefir plus and niacinamide. Why am I having a hard time with niacinamide? Niacinamide, two probiotics that fuel the ability to maintain a healthy microbiome. Lots of what we were doing back when, I don't know, YouTube was first getting going with the beauty years and years ago. People were experimenting with every possible kind of acid and every single kind of peeling treatment and exfoliating treatment. And what they discovered was we need some natural things growing on our face for a lack of being gross that are actually part of our microbiome and we need to feed them and take care of them as opposed to drying everything up and making our skin completely stuck, sit, stiff, not hydrated, not protected. Now, I did put another sunscreen on. I wear the Bloom FX Tulip 2 sunscreen every day. This is nice that it has a sunscreen in it. it calls itself a foundation. We're supposed to shake it up really good. So I'm going to give that a good shake right now. The active ingredient in this is octanoxate. So oh, that doesn't really thrill me because this is one of those ones that is problematic. Okay, I did read that correctly. This has octanoxate in it as its active ingredient for sunscreen, which means it's not reef safe. A little bit disappointing. I thought I was going to get a nice glowy sheer fun foundation with a sunscreen. Alas, it is not, not what I was hoping for. But if I'm not going in the ocean, maybe day to day, this is something that I can wear. We're certainly going to try it out today. I'm going to pump. We love a pump. Get some of that air out. I'm just gonna pump out one little pump so you can see it's kind of runny. Let's, let's put something behind it that you can really see. It's kind of a runny consistency. Color match looks really great. So I'm gonna take my Sonia G Jumbo base. I'm going to dip my brush into a little bit of this foundation. It says to work from the center out. So that is what I'm going to do. I'm going to try to do one side of my face first. So we can do a comparison. 
it doesn't have a scent other than it doesn't even really smell sunscreeny. It just kind of smells. I don't really smell a lot at all, actually. I thought that I was getting some kind of a scented product here, but we'll take a look at the ingredients and see what they use for fragrance or if they do not. Okay, I'm still on that half a pump and or that pump on half of my face, I should say. Seems to be really evening out my skin tone. It feels really nice, very hydrating, nice slip. Seems to be blending into my skin really well. That's the side with nothing. Let me zoom me in a little closer. There we go. And this is without any color corrector. The only thing I used on my skin to prime it is skincare and I used the Victoria Beckham primer in original that was a couple hours ago so it's all had a chance to really soak in by now okay so this is one pump I still have half of it left here's the center of my face this is the one with the foundation and this is the one without, with, without. Now this is a bruise from my Botox. We're not going to count that. <laughs> I'm going to do the other side now. Again, starting from the center of the face and working out, like they said. I'm just kind of experimenting, seeing what happens if I go under the eye or over the eye. It's a very sheer formula. And one of the things I read is that the active ingredients for skincare in this are in the same effectiveness level as their actual just serums. So what they say is that they say is that the skincare active foundation provides a healthy glowing finish and 24 hour hydration in just one week on bare skin. It visibly more even toned, hydrated and smoothed and each packs the same level with the fermented kefir and niacinamide that are effective in the skincare ingredients as any Shiseido serum. And they are calling this medium coverage. I think we'll have to do some spot concealing on my bruise, but I don't expect anything to cover that right now. Okay, so this is one pump. Still have a little left. that I have smoothed everywhere. I have to say it feels nice. It looks luminous and radiant. We'll have to see what the dry down is like, if it needs powder or not. What I am going to do is I'm going to take a tiny little bit more and just see if we're going to get a buildable situation here. I'm going to take a more dense brush to really concentrate the product and see. I'm just going to pull out a small concealer brush from Hourglass just to see what would happen if I try to build coverage in certain areas like this bruise. I mean, it's definitely toned down the color of that bruise. I'm going to go down here where I normally would really need some concealer. 
on those marionette lines, jowls, whatever you'd like to refer to these lovely parts of aging. It's going on beautifully. I mean, I, I know I'm going to need a concealer, but they do with every product. And really, you can do your whole face in a pump for sure. All right, let's get a bigger blending brush here to really buff. Go in right here. Got some sun damage. So it is buildable. You can see I'm getting more coverage, but it's not mask like it's not like I'm sitting here covering up all my skin and that you're not going to be able to see freckles and such remember always to take it down the neck and onto the ears okay we're going to put this aside for a moment Maybe. <laughs> and let's see what we think. It's pretty, isn't it? Pretty on the skin. I don't see anything really settling here. It didn't really go deep, deep around the nose. So let's try that out. I think it's really nice when they have added sunscreen. Just whatever you can do to further protect your skin as long as you're not doing flash photography, which actually wouldn't even be affected by this one because it's a chemical sunscreen, which I normally don't use. I wear a physical sunscreen every day. I just was so excited to see that Shiseido had a new glowy foundation. I just jumped on it and bought it. I won't swim in it though. I don't think I would go swimming with this kind of makeup anyway. All right, so let's take a look. Really pretty, very glowy. I don't see it settling. It's kind of like gone over my wrinkles. It, nothing looks accentuated. I am gonna put on some more makeup so i am going to use since this has silicones in it i'm going to want to use a concealer that also has silicones in it so i'm going to go with the surat dew drop and it's a pen Just going to brighten some of the areas that I hit every day. Using concealer instead of more foundation. Okay, I'm going to go back to my Sonya G because it's Got all of our skincare on it. And I'm basically just patting this in to give myself, oh, hello. There's a golden retriever here. Hi, Sunny. Can you come here? Can you say hello? Come here. Come here. Come here. Oh, it's Sunny, the golden retriever. Here, let's see. Hi. Hi, baby. Okay, I'm videoing. Do you like the sun, this, this sunscreen slash foundation? He was very interested, so he came to find out. 
So it's nice that this had a chance to warm up on my face anyway. I always think that concealers work best when you allow your skin to warm them up a little. Makes them a little bit easier to blend. This really likes this foundation, having no problems. I could use a concealer brush, but I kind of wanted to use this because I wanted to see and make sure that there wasn't any interference between the foundation and the concealer. Okay. Let's put a little dot here. Probably going to have to color correct this. But for now, we're going to leave it. Okay, so this is the foundation with some concealer. I'm going to go th over the concealer now, just patting it in with my puff. Just to make sure that there's no excess product, I'm just sort of patting my face. We always want to have as little product on the skin as possible for the most natural look. Less is definitely more. And I'm just bouncing with a little bit of pressure just to really push the concealer and the foundation into the skin and, and into each other. Okay, so that is looking really pretty. I don't see anything breaking up. I don't see any accentuation of lines. I'm going to put on a little bit of makeup and come back and we will discuss the rest of my look with this new foundation. Okay, here's the finished look. I used some Linda Hallberg Cosmetics eyeshadows. I used this one called the Reload Palette. Her shadows are beautiful. I used her Golden Twenties Palette. This is a great one for special occasions, brides, gorgeous. And I put a little bit of her most fun palette called Shimmer Saga. And as you can see, these are all duochrome, multi-chrome. They have incredible pearl. It's not glitter, it's pearl. And I added a little bit of the silver from here, just in the center when I was finished, just to bring a little light back. I think I'm going to put that, some of that in the corner also, my inner corner, just to give it that little tiny bit of luminosity. And that up a little bit, maybe under the brow. So we're going to see how this wears. I'm going to go and do some errands today. I am going to be running around. It's nice out, so that's a good thing because I think we're supposed to get some rain tomorrow. So far, I did not powder this. I used a... Actually, I used a Gucci lipstick for my my cheek color and I used a little bit of a Chanel 
Balm. This one in Rouge Fresh, which is, I'm sure I'm butchering this because I took Spanish, not French. But if you just take a little of this and dab it in the right places, it gives you that little hint of color. But you also get that nice luminous look. I don't feel like there's anything that's too shiny. Maybe I'll powder down the middle. Okay, I'm just going to grab the Shantikai. A lot of people like this one. And this is in the shade Light Medium. It comes in a bunch of different compacts. This is the one that I have, kind of no frills. But I'm literally just tapping this on here because I don't want a whole lot. I'm going to start under my eyes. It's very smoothing. All right, we'll take a little on the side over here. Just go for it. These wear tests have to be like real life, like what you would really do. If it doesn't perform with other products, it's not really going to work for me. And I understand the logic behind not putting on too much of anything. But I also want this to become synergistic. I want everything working together for the good of, of mankind and the makeup on my face. <laughs> okay, I don't know if I'm digging my lips, but I feel like it's just like a nice balm, just Gucci. It's just very hydrating. Feels excellent. I don't know what else I can do except for go do my errands and come back. Let me zoom you in again. This is what the foundation looks like with the makeup. I have to say I like it a lot. I'm bummed about the about the actinoxate. It's just, I thought that they weren't putting this in anything anymore. I didn't think this was like an ingredient that was even really going to be out there if it's so terrible for our reefs and our oceans. I, I'm not sure how I feel about this, even though I think it is really very pretty and wears incredibly well. I think I'm gonna take a look at more Shiseido products and see if perhaps there's another glowy foundation that they have that maybe doesn't have the SPF that's chemical in here. I really have made the switch to um, physical sunscreens. Um, Non-nano, I use Josh Rosebrook, I use Bloom Effects. I have a bunch of them, and I think maybe I'll do a video on that because people don't realize you need to be wearing sunscreen all year long, indoors, outdoors, and you're going to get that blue light protection from many of them also. All right, I will see you guys in a little while, and I am going to go to Sephora, actually, so hopefully I'll bring home something fun that I can share with you guys. But sound out down below. If there are products you guys want me to try, let me know. I'm really flexible. Maybe it's a foundation that I already have. I am going to be doing days where I use absolutely nothing new on my face, and we're just going to learn to... Go back into our collections, find the things that we had fallen in love with before we went on to the next thing and bring them back and bring back the best of the best. All right. I will see you guys in a little while. Have a great day. Okay. I added a little bit of the RMS powdered blush just to see how the powder sits on on this foundation, whether it's the translucent or with another kind. My skin feels really good. 
they please do it without act and act say oh my gosh i I like this a lot. I think it's going to really hold up well. We'll see how it does when I get back. And I don't know. I just, I'm a little sad. I'll see you guys in a little while. I hope that um, this face of makeup stays and that we can talk about it when I get back. So it's been seven hours since I put on the Shiseido Revital Essence Skin Glow Foundation. I have nothing bad to say about this other than the fact that I'm devastated that there's octanoxate in it. It is beautiful. It faded pretty. It didn't settle into like any lines or like accentuate anything or make me look weird. And this eyeshadow from Linda Hallberg is so good too. Um, I did put a little bit of lip balm on before because my lips were really hurting, but honestly, the skin, let's see if we can zoom in here. It looks really good. It's really pretty and it doesn't feel like I have anything on my skin right now. It just feels really hydrated. I'm not dried out. I'm not, I, I have nothing bad to say. I just really wish that they would have chosen a different sunscreen <laughs> to put in there so that it's not something that is gonna hurt our oceans and kill our coral reefs. I just feel like we all need to like make those decisions right now, but this foundation is undeniably beautiful and I'm not going to go swimming in it but I'm going to keep wearing it and try some more of the Shiseido I think because wow my skin feels so good and I'm so happy about it I really am again the actinoxate, I, 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 I don't understand. It's 2023 and we all know about it. But I can see where they would say that this improves your skin because they're saying 24 hour, 24 hour hydration in just one week. Bare skin is visibly more even toned and hydrated and smoothed. I definitely feel like I could be on the road to that. <laughs> I'll keep trying more things, but in the meantime, if you're not going swimming, the amazing thing is that I'm not dying to take this off of my skin it's really it's pretty it faded nicely it sort of i don't know became even more one with the skin the longer that it was on and if you remember we powdered just in the center of the face and under the eyes and it doesn't look dry it doesn't look crusty anywhere it's not grabbing any patches it's not accentuating any texture please don't swim while you're wearing this because it would hurt the reefs but if you're not swimming like i didn't swim today it's a good one feels good it looks good it's very glowy. It's dried down. I don't know what else you could ask for. It's gorgeous. Just gorgeous. I'm going to give it an 8 just because of the environment. Just please don't go swimming in this. <laughs> Not that like, I can ever imagine putting foundation on and going swimming. But um, this is beautiful. The fade is beautiful. The color is beautiful. The way it feels on the skin is beautiful. 
I don't feel dry or tight or anything. This eyeshadow from Linda Hallberg too is just beautiful. And also the fade there is gorgeous. For this many hours of makeup, I did put on a little of the Chantecaille Lip Veil in Freesia. Sorry, Lip Chic in Freesia, just because my lips were like super dried out. But guys, I think this is going to be a huge hit for people. I can see this being worn by people with dry skin, normal skin. Oily skin may have to do a little extra powdering because I have no idea what kind of oils are going to come through. I'm so dry. So on the dry scale and on the dry side of things, I have to say this is one of the best that I've tried. And the nicest thing about it is I'm not dying to go wash it off. That's pretty incredible. Usually I'm like, oh, I just want to get this off my face. I want to put my skincare on. My, my skin feels great. Give this one a try. It's beautiful. Wonderful formula. And a wonderful formula. A great foundation. No swimming. Okay. Okay, the internet is a dangerous thing. They are talking about what this does and I need you to do some research if you're going to wear this because actinoxate is the UVB filter in 90% of sunscreens in the United States. The FDA and, and Food and Drug Administration have approved it for use in cosmetics and pharmaceutical products. Ooh. This is very um, controversial. Everybody has to do their own research and decide what's right for them and make sure that you're aware of this ingredient. I, um, I'm going to have to think long and hard about whether or not I'm keeping this now, but I will definitely be doing my research, and I hope that you do too. Everybody have a good night. Bye. I'm, I am bummed and kind of dumbfounded with so many options out there. Why put it in? I don't get it. I mean, it is just a beautiful, I got my lights turned way down right now, but it is just so pretty. And look at the fade. The fade is pretty. I mean, it's like all one. Everything came together. Makes me sad. <laughs> All right, I'm going to find something from Shiseido. That's going to be my goal for tonight. I'm going to look through, see what I can find, and try something without octanoxate in it because this stuff is great, which tells me that they probably make really wonderful complexion products. I'm going to find out about it. So have no fear. I still don't know what to do with this. Ugh. Okay, that's it. Thanks. Good night, everybody. So update. I've been looking on Sephora. And the Synchro, Self, Synchro Skin Self-Refreshing Foundation SPF 30 has octanoxate in it as does the Radiant Lifting Foundation SPF 30 Octanoxate. They all have it. I'm going to do a little digging, and I think we're going to address this in the blog. 
business is constant. We have so many choices and options out there, but when you are dealing with skin that is over the age of 50 and you find something that you really, really like, I need to find out a little bit more about this ingredient and see if this is more than what I'm thinking because it's not reef safe or if this is something that truly is in 90% of the sunscreens that are in the U.S. And if there is, then what are the implications of that? Or are there just, is there not just enough data on this to see how this affects a person? It's a beautiful foundation, and I love the brand, but I'm going to do some research and do my blog. If you haven't yet had a chance to check out my blog, it's on my website. Just type Michelle Bernstein, Bernstein is with a U, dot beauty, there's no dot com. And I have been focusing in on ageism. Yeah, I'm going to look into octanoxate. I'm going to teach us everything that we need to know about it. I'm going to find out what pro products have it, what products don't have it. Shiseido is an amazing brand. I mean, gorgeous makeup and just a huge story past and... I'm going to need to look into this. So, this is not goodbye. This is goodbye for now. And when I have updates, I will add it to this video and post it when it's ready. And you will have the whole thing with the magic of video editing while I go do my work. I hope you all have a wonderful day today. Bye.